Hi everybody, it's Christian. I hope you're well. I just realised it's been a little while since I did a detailed look inside my template. Um, there's been some changes recently, uh, mainly with the introduction of Omnisphere, uh, which is a plugin that I'm using for various ambient pads and key sounds. But I thought while I've got my template open, um, for some people that have recently connected with me and my blog, I'll give you a quick overview of everything that's going on in the template and then show you what we're doing with Omnisphere. So uh, we're now running 210 uh, scenes down this side. We've got 39 tracks going this way. And this is the master template, so everything is in here. And I just reassign my MIDI controller for the service or the set that I'm playing. Um, so I've always got one file. It takes a little, uh, a few moments to open now because of the amount of stuff in here. Um, but I just find it so much easier this way. Um, so the first column we've got is ambient pads. So at the top they are just ambient pads and then we put them in underneath songs where we need them. So for example, if I was to trigger off the one in A, this uh, volume controller here is mapped to a foot controller on my pedal so I can fade in just this droning ambient pad uh, which I can play pretty much any major chord structure over the top of. So we've got those there. Uh, the next column is our loops column. Um, so each one of these is on a little fold out button um, and if I just drop the browser a little bit, there we go. So you can see that we've got a whole range of um, single shot um, and multi split loops in here. Uh, the reason we've got two columns is for creating flow so if i wanted to go from one song for example this one avalanche to bittersweet not that i'd ever do that but if i wanted to um, i could remove stop buttons from here so that when this one plays it doesn't cut off the end of this one um, there's a whole video on creating flow and removing those stop buttons on my blog so check that out it's a really sweet little tip the next column over uh, when you expand is for multi-tracks so you can see if we come down here um, We've got uh, some tracks which we've split into parts, so into keys parts. Uh, there's some tracks which have got bass and lead and electric guitars in, uh, pianos, keys, and there's a whole load there that we're doing. Spirit Breakout, we're doing with two keys and beats, Save the World, etc. Um, Stand Up is split into parts as well. And again, the reason we've got two columns here is so that we can create this bit of flow that if we wanted to move from Save the World here to Stand Up here, I can take out these stop buttons uh, so that when stand up plays it doesn't cut off the end of Save the World. So that's the reason why we've got some multiple keys and columns in there. Um, the next line over is our cue tracks. So we've got um, vocal cues that talk us through the entire arrangement and then we've got director cues. Now the first director cue tells us the the name and the key of the song. So for example, All Glory in A. Two. All Glory in A. Uh, and then this this cue track here then talks us through the whole arrangement. Now in some instances we are doing um, like this All Glory, just the same track, one single shot from start to end. But there are other instances um, which are, our God is one I've shown a couple of times, Save the World, so let's just stop there a minute, where we can actually uh, arrange on the fly. So to begin with we have Savior of the World. Two. Three, four. So this vocal director cue will talk us through the arrangement from start to finish. And you can see that we've set automation here. So when it finishes playing this line, it moves Two, down a three, line. Four. There we go. And we simply do that by clicking into the track, um, selecting that line that we want to automate, tell it to play for five bars and then move down. And then we do the line below, 12 bars and move down and so on. Uh, the great thing with Ableton and the way that we do this is that we can actually, sorry, let me keep that open a minute, we can arrange on the fly. So you'll see on these cues track here, we've got verse, down, chorus, intro. And these are set to have no quantization at all. So that means that when I press the button, it'll say verse in our ear straight away. And then we can move on to um, that actual sample that's playing on the very next downbeat. So for example, if I just put the click in, it's just a click, and I want to go and do the chorus. When I press this chorus trigger on my foot control, it will say chorus in our ear, and then the chorus will come in on the next one. Chorus! On the next one, here we go. Or we might want to go to bridge. Bridge! On the next one. And so on. And again, within the multi-track, we could go in here and we could take the bass out, we can put the lead guitar in if we need to do instrument replacement. We don't tend to do that so often. We mainly use it for synth, keys and beats parts in our setup now. So that's the multi-track and that's the cues. The next one over is uh, one called Clicks. Uh, two columns, one for alternate clicks. So um, for example, the song Oceans, um, we use an alternate click. 
simply because uh, there's a couple of tempo changes in the song and rather than automate the tempo changes we've recorded out a WAV file in the right tempo with the changes. Uh, the next column is consists of either brown or yellow clips. Now a yellow clip turns the metronome on so if we wanted to do at your name again at your name. you can hear that the clip's on but then if I went to a pad in A when I press that it turns the click off and just plays the pad so we don't have to use the stop button uh, and we can move between having the click on and the click off. The other great thing is is we can go into a track like um, at your name is a good example and you can see that we've programmed this to turn the click off so what we're basically doing is we're sending a MIDI note out on this column and using the MacBook's IAC driver we're routing it back in to this metronome here this is included in the template that's available for purchase on my website but it means that I can go to bar 189 and turn the click off so at the end of that track the click stops the tracks finished playing the pad might continue and now I can play um, Omnisphere sounds or something else on top of that if I wanted to as well. So that's how that works. Uh, then we've got a column called MIDI triggers and this is where I re really enjoy myself and get a little bit geeky. We've got four columns here. The first one is for video so if we're playing a track that has a lyric video we put a MIDI note in there that MIDI note gets sent via Wi-Fi to the computer that's running ProPresenter and will either create a keystroke using a translator called Bones or the MIDI module from ProPresenter to start that video playing. There are two videos on my blog about controlling ProPresenter with and without that MIDI module, so check them out. The next one is for a chord book, so in some instances I'll have a comfort monitor on the front of the stage um, for some of the vocalists or uh, musicians to see, and it's basically a PDF of all of the songs that we do, and the MIDI note in here um, gets sent out of Ableton um, to the second screen to the PDF, and Bones MIDI Converter translates that to a page number so it automatically dials up the page so that every note is programmed to a different page number. Not using that so much anymore because I'm now using Onsong which is an amazing iPhone app um, and sorry, iPad app and I can now use it um, in the way that I want to. So every song in my template has a specific MIDI note and that MIDI note is reflected in Onsong so I've meta tagged every song in Onsong to reflect that MIDI note so that when the song plays it automatically jumps to the right song in on song um, and again there's a video explaining that and then the second column here are up and down buttons so if we go into at your name again you'll see that around this bar 109 or just after there's a MIDI note telling on song to move down to the second page of chords and again I can put another one to tell it to move up a page so that rather than scrolling I can jump down to the bridge jump back up to the chorus or depending on how my PDF is arranged uh, then we get into the new edition, which is Omnisphere. So what I wanted to do, twofold really, is I wanted to have the facility of plugging in a keyboard or MIDI controller for either myself or the keys player to play um, to play keys through Ableton, so that we're utilising the Om Omnisphere sounds. Uh, but also there are times when there is a video called Playing Chords with My Feet, and I want to be able to use my soft step controller to play single notes or triads that can. Uh, create some keys sounds as well. So um, basically what I've done is I've got eight Omnisphere sounds loaded in here um, and if I bring up the IO, not the IO, the, um, the mixer down here, uh, these arming tracks one through eight to begin with are mapped to a MIDI note so I can literally, um, let me just show this in a minute, I can trigger off the first one and then play a chord sequence And I'm doing that from the soft step controller. And then if I press the next MIDI note, it moves along to sound two. Let's just map to a MIDI button. It could be on a keyboard, it could be a number on the actual keypad, or it could be a foot pedal. And I've not really auditioned these sounds, I've just picked sounds which are different, but you get the idea. And you can play combinations of sounds, so I can press two MIDI notes together to arm four and eight and just create a bit of a, a bit of a swell type thing. Um, so that's kind of what I've done there. And then the last two are piano sounds, um, and I've just got them on a different plugin, um, which is one called Giant from Contact 5, and you've just got keys, a piano sound there.
and then the final one. And so on. And just to show you what I've done there, really, is um, the first column, if I click into that, I ignore these two for the moment, I'm going to explain what they are in just a second. This is my Omnisphere, and I created that by simply going to plugins and dropping in my um, Spectronics Omnisphere into there. Um, and if I was to click on the tool here, I can actually bring up my Omnisphere uh, edit page. So you can see the, they are the eight sounds, and any of them can be changed. So if I go into the book, I've got something like 8,000 different sounds to choose from, hence why I've two weeks into using it, or a week into using it, actually. I've not really auditioned uh, the sounds that I want to be able to use, and I've just put different ones in for now. So I can choose the sounds, I can have that set up. Um, and then every column is set up as follows. I've got the main column, which is my main instance of Omnisphere. Column two, uh, I've got an external instrument, so I've just literally got external instrument and dropped that in into my Ableton session. And then I said MIDI two main, which so MIDI is going to this Omnisphere instrument, but go to sound number two within Omnisphere and pull the audio back from stereo pair three and four. Um, and then I've done that for each along the line. So three, uh, pulling from Omnisphere three and the audio from five and six, four, seven and eight. So I've got my eight different sounds. And then what I've done with these two is if I'm playing keys on a, a keyboard controller, I wouldn't use this. But if I wanted to do single finger chords or if I wanted to play from the soft step controller um, and just hold down a single note and have Ableton create the chord, this is what I'm doing. So the first one is just a, a major scale. I can dial in the key here and this will basically mean that if I play a note that doesn't fit the scale, it'll move it to the relevant note. So um, if I'm playing a note here, you'll see them. Uh, actually, sorry, let me just light that one up so you can see it. Um, you'll see see the notes just... So I cannot play a note outside of that scale. The next one is just cr is a, a chord plugin from Ableton. So again, I've come over to here, I'm taking MIDI effects, I'm using a chord and I'm using the f uh, fifth chord just to basically create a fifth. Um, so it basically shifts the second note seven semitones up. You can play around with this to create any chord voicing you like, but it means that again I can hold down one note and it's going to create a chord around it. I could decide to put the um, a lower octave in as well. So and then when I hold a note, we get and so on. So I can I can put a fourth in. I can do whatever I like there. Um, to create different chord voicings. So this is really good if I'm just holding single notes on the Omnisphere. Um, and then what I did is, um, because the notes that I'm allowed to play are dictated by this button, I've created that to a MIDI clip here in this last column called Omnisphere. Um, and this MIDI clip is a MIDI controller and it basically goes ten and a half places between keys. So I just literally dragged it to the point that I want it to do for the relevant key. So if we go back over here and you watch this dial here, as I trigger off different keys, you'll see that that will change. So if I trigger off B, it dials to B. C, it dials to C. If I dial, you know, C sharp or D flat, A, and so on. So it'll it'll limit those chords playing. And I can put this um, MIDI note against every track that we do so it will only allow me to play in the right key um, and that's basically what we've done there um, quite simple but works really well for us so I can hold down single notes with the soft step and create these pad textures um, I can do it from a keyboard controller I can turn these off really easily and I probably will set a master MIDI button that's mapped to all of these right across all eight instant instances to turn them off at the end I've got a piano uh, and I'm just using um, a plug-in Giant, giant uh, in the native instruments contact there. It's the only one I've got in there at the moment. And that just allows me um, to play key sounds. And I've got no chords effects from there. And again, the second piano is just doing the same little trick using the external instrument to pull that in. So that may help. That may inspire some of you. I'm fairly new with Omnisphere, so there's probably more intelligent ways of running 
Omnisphere, but this works in the context of my master template. So I've now got all of my key sounds once I audition them, all of my loops, all of my cues, all of my ambient pairs and all of my controls in one template. I can control it all from one foot controller or I could have my foot controller for the loops and a keyboard MIDI controller for all the key sounds. So I hope that helps. Any questions, drop me an email. Uh, hopefully it just inspires you just to dig a little bit deeper into the stuff that Ableton can do. Um, God bless and take care. Bye-bye.